Well, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending where you are joining us from. Welcome back to the Launchpad. It is the middle of the night for us over here in North America, but you are joining us for our live launch coverage of tonight's ULA Atlas V launch with the 401 configuration, launching Lucy to the Trojan Asteroids uh, to do a incredible 12-plus year mission uh, with multiple Earth flybys, changing its research location, uh, and it's expected that this mission will be extended, but the first 12 years are planned, and it's amazing that that takes us already into the early 2030s, but as we get started here and we start to come in the room, we know it's the middle of the night, couple questions for you, one, where are you watching from, and two, how many of you just woke up in the last 30 minutes like I did, uh, drop it in the chat, let me know when you got up, or have you been powering through it, you've got your cup of coffee and you are uh, ready to power through, luckily not too long of a stream here, we did just pass the T-60 minus minute mark uh, not too long ago, so we're not going to be here for hours but uh, a very exciting launch nonetheless let's see who we've got here in the chat though I see Skyflyers here we've got 
Uh, Brian, we got James Glover as well. James Martin is here. Hank the Blobfish. Reign of Cali. Lots of people in the chat. Let us know where you're watching from. Love to give you a shout out. If you are new, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help us out here at the Launchpad. It's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow. And we believe space is better together. So we invite you to be part of our crew by subscribing. Join our Discord community. It's free. Uh, and yeah, just being part of this awesome space community around the world. If you've been with us for the last couple days, you'll have to bear with me. I am coming uh, off being sick here, but uh, we didn't want to miss this launch, so bear with me if I do uh, mute the microphone every now and again for a quick cough there. But uh, an exciting launch, quick breakdown of a few different things that uh, are taking place on uh, today's mission uh, details. We'll be launching from Slick 41 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. The payload, Lucy, weighs 1,550 kilograms uh, or 3,417 pounds. Um, spacecraft is going to visit seven Trojan asteroids. That's the current plan, but it is expected that that could be extended. Obviously, it's going to pass other stuff as it goes, and I'm sure they're not just going to turn it off. Uh, they're going to capture quite a bit of data uh, around uh, both these ast large asteroid uh, sections of our solar system. Launching on an Atlas V, obviously not a reusable rocket. Weather was 90% go, but we did just recently hear the one hour mark. We are now at 100% go for weather, which is absolutely incredible to hear for Cape Canaveral. This is the 40th launch of the Atlas V launch vehicle in the 401 configuration. The 89th Atlas V mission, 146th mission for United Launch Alliance. And we've been hearing both. But either this is the 99th or the 100th launch attempt of this year. But a uh, very exciting, busy year. Slowed down over the summer with some issues with liquid oxygen. Starlink getting some upgrades. Uh, but hopefully we'll pick up here for the later half of this year. I'm sure they'll tell us lots more about the mission once NASA gets started here. They're expected to go live in about 15 minutes from now. They'll break down the mission. In much greater detail than I probably will be able to, but uh, a little bit of a summary uh, for it. Lucy's mission uh, is the first mission of its kind that will explore seven asteroids that are located around Jupiter, which has two Lagrange points uh, of the asteroid belt. So a big chunk of asteroids before it and after it in the same orbit. Uh, so what Lucy will do will actually use Earth assists to be able to get up to the first Lagrange point, do some study, actually come back visit some other asteroid, and then actually head back out again to the second set. So quite a very unique mission for uh, this reconnaissance imaging vehicle, uh, but it'll be very interesting to see what uh, science uh, is being able to be recovered. Uh, the first research, I believe, is going to be expected to be able to be done in 2027. So we do have a few years to wait until uh, some of these early uh, visits and data start to come by. Um, but uh, I'm sure it'll be well worth the wait. But if you're just joining us, let us know in the chat where you're watching from. Love to welcome you here. If you guys have questions about Lucy, ULA, the Atlas V, uh, Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, you can drop those in the chat and we will continue to answer those. Uh, keeping an eye on ULA for their... Uh, keeping an eye on ULA and their uh, live updates. The full fill sequence uh, has begun. Uh, this is what they use just to top up their engines and their tanks uh, in preparation for ignition. But uh, a couple of hours ago, they did start fueling, which was really great to hear. Everything went on time. They had a very small hold at the two-hour mark, which is a built-in hold into their countdown. Uh, so everything progressing well. Um, Lucy's first asteroidic encounter will actually be 2025 on its way out to the Trojan Swarm. Uh, it won't be a Trojan asteroid that it visits, but it will be actually visiting an asteroid in between. James Martin is in Abilene, Texas. Great to have you here. James Glover is in Australia. Thanks for being here. Looks like it's going to be a James night in the chat. We do know our friend Marcus is out at... Uh, on one of the beaches, taking a look, watching Lucy in person. So we hope you've got uh, clear weather and are enjoying uh, that view. Super jealous uh, and enjoy it. It's 8 p.m. Oh, I wish it was 8 p.m., James. It is 
just almost 3 a.m. here. How is the weather at the launch site? Right now, the launch site uh, weather is 100% go. Um, those little pings that you hear are the updates coming in from ULA on their live uh, tracker. I guess we could actually just pull this up for you guys on the stream uh, so you guys can see what I'm seeing as uh, ULA has a really great system uh, where they can kind of just send updates as the evening progresses. Let's pull this up here for you guys. We'll do this, and we will transition over. There we go. So this is a uh, this is on the ULA website. So anyone's welcome to uh, pull this up. But every time you hear a ping, it means they're putting up a live status update, uh, breaking down a little bit more about the actual rocket and its breakdown, um, talking about uh, the sequence. So we're keeping an eye on this until the actual NASA feed goes live. Maximus is in mid. Kiff, Texas, great to see you. Brian, excellent. Yes, some great weather conditions, which is uh, a little bit more odd to hear at this point of the year, uh, but we're glad to hear that that is uh, progressing well. We did see the uh, press visit did occur earlier today. And some of the other media got up there. Tori Bruno was there with a few people as well, uh, giving a look at Lucy out on the pad. Uh, this is the first Atlas rocket launch we've had in quite a while, uh, as the last one was supposed to be Starliner. Uh, it was out at the pad, launching on a similar, uh, same rocket, just a different configuration. Uh, but unfortunately, obviously, the issues occurred with the Starliner craft, uh, and that is why uh, we have not seen an Atlas uh, in a little bit. They were also doing some other work out on the pad, uh, doing some testing of some other things. But now they are back there, ready to launch Lucy uh, out to Jupiter, I believe it is. Uh, so a great launch happening here tonight. We are expecting NASA to go live in just under 10 minutes or so here. If you're just joining us, though, take a moment, share out the link really does help us out uh, and let people know. I know it's the middle of the night, so if you are watching the replay, drop in the comments replay. Just let us know that you're watching that. We'd love to hear from you guys as well. If you guys do have questions, you can still drop those in the comments, and we work to answer those in the comments section uh, following the launch. We also work to have our timestamps in, uh, so you're able to jump towards the launch. So if you don't want to wait right now, check out the timestamp below. You might be able to jump right to the launch time uh, if you want. Want to be able to do so if you're also new and you haven't yet joined our discord you can do so the links in the description it's totally free uh, to do so we'd love to have you in there normally we'd be hanging out uh, if it wasn't the middle of the night in the live calm section you guys are welcome to jump in there anytime ask questions hang out we've also got our gaming hangout so if you're a fan of Kerbal or minecraft things like that you can hang out in there as well Aaron Williams, I am about 46 miles from the pad here in Orlando, and I have a straight shot view from my driveway once it breaks the horizon. Aaron, that's incredible. I'm extremely jealous of you. That's a great view to be able to have from your home. Um, almost probably comes normal seeing rocket launches then, or uh, being able to see them off in the distance, but that's a really awesome opportunity. Glad you're up for it. I know it's, uh, an er decent, it's a decent time if you're out on the East Coast. You know, like a 5.30, 5.40 a.m. launch isn't too bad. For us here on the west side, it's pretty early. Levels, hello, good to see you as well. We're going to take a very brief moment, share out the link a couple places, and I will be right back. But you're watching our live coverage here. Skip McQuader's checking you out from Columbia, South Carolina. Hey, Skip, how's it going? Great to have you in here. We're uh, just waiting for some more updates here. Uh, from ULA as they count down towards uh, the live stream actually coming up with NASA here in about five minutes where we'll get some live views uh, from the pad. Uh, we are expecting NASA to be live 
uh, as you can see there, actually in five minutes. So we do have all that already pulled up. Uh, doesn't look like we've had any more updates, but currently everything is go. Uh, so a good morning uh, for a launch from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. If you guys are down there checking out the launch in person and do take any photos or videos, make sure to tweet those. Tweet them at and tag us at at TLPN underscore official. We love to retweet those for you. Hey, Aiden, how's it going? Ooh. So there's some of the targets. So you can see there, there's that big flash update. That's because they put in a, a new update. So here is the breakdown of the targets of Lucy. 2027, Lucy will visit the first Trojan asteroids, uh, Eurobates and Kitia. Kitia? Probably saying that wrong. Uh, then in September 27, we'll visit another one. Um, there'll be an asteroid it visits. Not sure why this one isn't bolded. Maybe they just forgot. Looks like 2028, April 2028, and then there's a big jump in time. And this is when Lucy is actually, and I'm sure they'll show it to us, actually going to leave one set of the asteroids, return to Earth, and do a loop back out into a separate uh, section of uh, the asteroids in that orbit. So it'll be very interesting to see lots of data. First uh, first rocket launch of its kind. Uh, and it is looking like NASA is live here. So we're going to patch them in as we now have our first live views from the pad. Looks like they're still getting their, uh, their camera set up there. But there is uh, a great live shot of the pad here tonight uh, from NASA Cape Canaveral Space Force Station with Lucy out on the pad. This is going to be a night launch. Yes, this launch is happening, Aiden, uh, in about 35 to 40 minutes from now. So when we are expecting the targeted liftoff time here. If you're just joining us though, take a moment, let us know where you're watching from, let us know did you just wake up to an alarm in time to catch our coverage, or have you stayed up through the night, had some coffee, and are waiting for this to launch before you head to bed. We were quite used to these last year with Starlink launches, uh, as many of them were seemed to be right in the middle of the night, or early, early middle of the night. Another update from ULA that they're about to start their live stream here in just a couple of minutes. So that's a great sign. We do have both both pulled up here. Uh, and we'll aim to bring you guys the, uh, the full coverage from them as well as our commentary and the live views from the pad. We are working to get our cameras out there for future launches as well. If you'd like to help support us being able to do that, uh, you can check out our Patreon memberships or YouTube memberships. That's a great way to help us budget what we can do each month to get our crew out there um, for as many launches as we can. I think the Blobfish, it's 11 a.m. over here. Aiden, it's 10.57 for me right now. I feel like you're in the ta same time zone, guys. Brian, it's 9.57 here in the UK, but it's Saturday morning, so I had to set my alarm. That's fair. See, it's a great time for you guys in the UK and Europe. Just the North America. Everybody else, it's great. Just North America, it's a nice early one. Their crews have been working um, through the night and through the evening last night, preparing for today's launch. Uh, they are currently in the countdown. They have completed the fuel fill sequence, uh, and the first stage is now ready for launch. So really great here. Hey, Aiden, we've got them patched in here. Hey, Cheetan, good to see you. Bob, I'm watching from the bath in London, UK. <laughs> what a world we live in. Well, enjoy your bath. N not sure that was something I ever thought I'd read out on air, but there we go. Uh, but glad you're here, and uh, it'll be an exciting launch here, uh, hopefully tonight. I've had confirmation that the first stage is fueled and ready to go here. 
with those Centaur engines on board. We're going to mute the alert sound here from ULA as it is going to start to pick up quite a bit more. Deborah, thank you so much for that super chat with the dancing pair guy going cool. Thank you so much. I appreciate you uh, supporting us in that way. Thank you so much. And just so you can see it here, we do have both feeds pulled up, ready to go. But we're going to keep the feed on that has the uh, has the rocket on view because that's what we want to see. We want to see the rocket, not the, uh, not the spinning version of Lucy. So we'll keep that on here. Ronald, hello from the Netherlands. Great to see you. Joining us just in time, just waiting for NASA to start their feed, but you're going to get a great view of Lucy out on the pad atop the Atlas V 401 configuration rocket out on Slick 41 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Getting ready for today's launch. Then let's listen in. On the ground, but headed towards some asteroids. And this is NASA's launch coverage of the Lucy mission. So they're having their little fancy intro there, but we'll uh, keep both up there on screen, but we'll keep that rocket on screen as much as we can here tonight as we count down the final, I believe it said 33 minutes, uh, until launch. Aaron, nothing like viewing a launch from the Cape, especially at night. It's an incredible feeling and sound even when you're seven miles away. Yeah, we were down at Inspiration 4. We were at the Saturn V Center just three miles away, and oh, I'd love to get down there to see an Atlas launch here. Let's listen in to the NASA update. It's in L minus 34 minutes. This Atlas V rocket will send Lucy on the first ever space mission to study the Trojan asteroids, which share Jupiter's orbit around the sun. Named after the Lucy fossil, the spacecraft will visit eight asteroids over 12 years as we seek to uncover the mysteries of our solar system's formation. Welcome and thank you for joining us here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center on the east coast of Florida. I'm Daryl Nail. We got a great launch for you. That's right. And I'm Marie Lewis. And we are both uh, vaccinated against COVID-19, which is why we're not wearing masks since we're outside. Launch is set for 534 this morning, Eastern Time, from Space Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. And we are at L minus 32 minutes and counting. No spacecraft has ever been to the Trojan asteroids. They are considered fossils of planet formation and may hold clues about our our ancient past. With boosts from Earth's gravity, Lucy will fly very close to eight asteroids over her 12-year journey. Just as the Lucy fossil has been extensively studied, the Lucy spacecraft promises to teach us about our solar system's evolution, including Earth. Now, no other space mission in history has visited as many different destinations in independent orbits around our sun. And we'll talk with the experts about Lucy's unprecedented journey ahead. That's right. And we'll also hear from the man who discovered the ancient Lucy fossil in Ethiopia in 1974. We'll learn about a special time capsule associated with this mission. Plus, we'll hear directly from the scientists who've spent years working towards this day. And to help us tell their story, we have commentators at the United Launch Alliance Atlas Space Flight Operations Center, or ASOC as we call it. We also have folks on the roof of that building and at a nearby viewing location. First, let's introduce you to the team of commentators who will be calling the launch today, NASA's Joshua Santora and Mick Waltman. Guys, how's it going over there? Hey, it's going uh, almost 
uh, unnervingly well. Uh, every knock on wood. Start knocking on wood. Uh, but I'm joined here with Mick Waltman, the chief of Fleet uh, Fleet Systems Integrations. Mick, always a pleasure to have you with me. Joshua, thanks. It's an exciting time this morning. As you said, it's been pretty quiet count so far. The teams came on, you know, several hours ago and started preps uh, to get the vehicle ready, and things are looking. So while they go through kind of their updates, we're getting a few updates in here from United Launch Alliance. You'll see at the bottom of the screen in the, if we switch over here to the right screen for you guys. Make a quick adjustment here. So on this screen here, we're trying to balance between the two cameras here. Uh, they are in a hold at T minus four minutes and holding. This is a planned schedule hold that's here. It's a 30 minute hold designed to give a large margin of error uh, should any issues uh, be developed. Uh, but it is something that it sounds like they are progressing through quite well. But they do progress through that full 30 minutes just in case something were to arise. We've also received confirmation all three cryogenic tanks on the rocket have been topped off with their final bits of fuel are at flight level and are now it is a now fully fueled atlas 5 rocket and is ready for launch we'll keep jumping back into the nasa feed but if you're just joining us let us know where you're watching from continue sending in your questions just tag us at the launch pad we'll be answering those live as we count down to today's launch but let's listen back into nasa here get ready for launch this morning yeah so things progressing well a lot of what's left is to get lucy ready to be living on her own and flying free um and so as we look ahead to the countdown we have a few things coming up including a weather weather check uh we also have the spacecraft moving to internal power uh and lots more to come we're excited so even beyond liftoff today stay with us um, i think that's going to do it for us for the moment again lots more to come ahead uh, marie we're going to send it back to you over to you all right, thank you, Joshua and Mick. Uh, we are now at L minus 28 minutes, 25 seconds and counting. The Trojan asteroids Lucy will visit are named after characters in Homer's famous poem, The Iliad. They are called Patroclus, Menetius, Euripides, Oris, Lucas, and Polymely. And the main belt asteroid Lucy will visit is called Donald Johansson, after the man who discovered the Lucy fossil. Now the eighth asteroid, Keta, is a small satellite of Euripides. Keta was named after the first woman to light the Olympic cauldron, Norma Enriqueta Basilio Sotelo. We'll show you how Keta was discovered a little later after launch. Right now we are L minus 27 minutes and counting. Lucy is inside the payload fairing, sitting on top of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket on pad 41. We want to show you what she'll look like once she's flying free in space. Lucy is more than 46 feet long, about the size of a large RV. Most of that length is from her huge solar panels, each almost 24 feet long. Lucy has a six and a half foot antenna with which she communicates with Earth. And there are three main instruments for remote sensing. Fully fueled, she weighs 3,417 pounds, a little heavier than a mid-sized car, and most of that weight is fuel. Yeah, those solar arrays are really impressive. And studying the Trojan asteroids from hundreds of millions of miles away requires a highly advanced set of instruments. Let's learn more about what's on board, Lucy. The Lucy spacecraft will be taking a journey where no other spacecraft has gone before, the Trojan asteroids. The Trojans are two groups of asteroids that lead and trail Jupiter in its orbit around the Sun, and they've been trapped in these stable locations for over four billion years. Lucy will have a suite of scientific instruments for collecting data as it flies by the asteroids. The LORI is a long-range reconnaissance imager. It's often referred to as Lucy's eagle eyes since it has the highest spatial resolution of all of Lucy's cameras. This black and white camera is actually a type of telescope, the same kind as the Hubble Space Telescope. The LORI was built to produce clear images of the Trojan's craters, which will be a challenge since the Trojan asteroids are extremely dark. The LORI will be able to see 75 yard wide craters from over 600 miles away. That's like standing at one end of a football field and being able to see a fly at the other end. The instrument's simple design does not use optical filters and includes no moving parts, reducing the risk of part failure during the mission. 
Lalori will also search the Trojans for evidence of any rings and new satellites. The instrument's ability to see faint targets from far away also makes it perfect for optical navigation. Lalori will help Lucy navigate to a point in space, and then a terminal tracking camera aboard the spacecraft, known as T2CAM, will help the instruments accurately point towards the targets. LATES is Lucy's thermal emission spectrometer, which detects far infrared radiation emitted by the asteroids due to how they are heated up by sunlight. LATES detects this radiation using a small telescope to focus the incoming energy onto a detector, similar to the way a remote thermometer works. So, the test is not taking images, but rather, temperature measurements at various points on the asteroid. This data will be combined so that scientists can get an understanding of its surface properties. The test will examine the properties of the regolith on the surface by measuring thermal inertia, which is the measure of how slowly the asteroid heats up from sunlight, and then releases that heat. By taking the temperature readings at different parts of the asteroid, the Lucy science team can measure the thermal inertia and figure out how much dust, sand, or rock is present on the asteroid's surface. That data will tell us a lot about how the asteroid was formed, providing insight into the history of our solar system. Lucy's LaRalph instrument will search the Trojans for organics, ices, and hydrated minerals, and will help determine the surface compositions of the asteroids. LaRalph is actually two instruments in one, and together they will measure and analyze the spectra of light absorbed and reflected by the asteroid. The first is a color visible imager, the Multispectral Visible Imaging Camera, or MVIC. It takes visible light color images of the Trojan asteroids. The second is an infrared imaging spectrometer, known as LISA, the Linear Edelon Imaging Spectral Array, which collects infrared spectra of the asteroids. Like LaLaurie, LaRalph does not have a focusing mechanism. Instead, it is designed to stay in focus despite the extreme temperature differences in space by being made almost entirely from a single block of aluminum. As you can see, the Lucy spacecraft has a large suite of tools to study the Trojan asteroids, which will help us better understand the formation of our solar system. And while we've been listening in there to uh, those updates, a couple updates on the weather. Uh, the upper level winds have been reviewed for another time as part of this scheduled 30 minute hold and are currently green uh, and have been verified as acceptable for launch. Weather is now green all the way through the launch timeline. As well, they have started uploading some of the final updates to the rocket's computer uh, to help it navigate any wind conditions uh, based on the current forecast and everything is programmed and getting ready for uh, tonight's launch here and progressing well through the timeline. The scientific community has been wanting to see these objects up close for a long time. And so we finally have a mission that's almost on its way. Yeah, this is really exciting. And I mean, the goal is to study how the outer planets formed. But why is that important for us to understand? Yeah, it's really important to understand solar system formation, uh, to understand where we came from and how our solar system works. It used to be that we had a vision that the solar system was a very calm uh, environment and that everything was very stable. But really, our recent ideas are that it's not like that at all. Mm. It's very, it had been very chaotic in mm. the early solar system history and that caused small bodies in the solar system many to be ejected out of the solar system oh, wow. and a small fraction to be captured in the Trojan asteroids. Gotcha, gotcha. And it's going to take a very complex trajectory right to get to these Trojan asteroids. I imagine that must have been really difficult to plot out four billion miles over 12 years. It really was. It <laughs> took the whole team to be able to make this amazing trajectory that really enables the mission. On the science side we started with a list of objects that we wanted to compare against each other. And then we handed that off to the mission designers and they ran with it and they found an amazing trajectory. And then the people who optimized the trajectory did their work. And so it's really a uh, effort from the whole team that got us this awesome trajectory. Perfect. And a quick last question. Why eight asteroids? That's a record breaking number. It is a record breaking number.
remember it. And we really needed to go by eight asteroids to really explore the diversity of these objects. There's more red and less red. There's smaller and larger objects. There's objects that we're going to be visiting that are remnants from a giant collision and also a primitive pair, a binary pair that orbits each other. So in order to look at, make all those comparisons, we needed to go past eight asteroids. Kathy, thank you so much. It sounds so exciting. And honestly, it's so we're so lucky because the weather looks so great right now. Right, Daryl? Right, Megan, the weather is cooperating wonderfully. You can't see it because it's dark out, right. um, but we've got great weather. Had a little bit of rain coming in. Mm -hmm. Just um, a little sprinkle. Just a little sprinkle, but uh, it looks clear overall. Let's take a look out at the live shot of our pad and the rocket, and you can see there it is looking beautiful in the light. Just a note for you in the upper left-hand corner, there's the L minus time, L minus 19 minutes and counting across the bottom. The progress bar, you see we are in a T minus four hold. More on that in a bit. But we're talking weather now, as you can see, clear through the dark. Uh, this is so that ground teams and launch teams can see what's going on with that illuminated pad and monitor what's happening around the rocket. Let's talk more about the weather. And yeah, we had a little bit of rain earlier, Will Ulrich, our launch weather officer. But overall, this is looking fantastic from a forecast perspective. That's right, Daryl. Really, all things considered, we couldn't be asking for better weather early this morning. The sprinkles that you mentioned have since cleared the area, and now all we're left with is partly cloudy skies and light winds, thanks in part to an area of high pressure that remains dominating over the southeastern United States. A live look at satellite imagery behind me shows those mostly clear skies across much of the state, and that's going to make for a great viewing opportunity, regardless of whether you're watching in Jacksonville, Tampa, Orlando, or locally right here in the Space Coast. My colleague Jessica Williams just gave her final weather brief at L minus 30 minutes to United Launch Alliance, Eastern Range, and NASA officials and gave a greater than 90% go for weather. So we are not tracking any issues at this time. As a reminder, my colleagues and I are here to ensure that the weather is safe for launch. And we do that through the evaluation of 10 lightning launch commit criteria, which are designed to protect against both rocket triggered and natural lightning. In addition, we also monitor user weather constraints like surface wind speed and precipitation. Justine, uh, Justin, Justine, Justin, thank you so much for that super chat. Hello again from the Philippines. Great to see you again. Thanks for jumping on. Let's keep listening into the weather update. Don't worry about that right now because conditions are looking great. Mother Nature is giving her thumbs up, and I'm happy to report that the 45th Weather Squadron is go for weather. Daryl? Great update about the weather outside. Thank you, Will. We are currently L minus 17 minutes and counting until liftoff. Asteroids are prehistoric treasures that hold the lost stories about our origin of the solar system. Here's what else you need to know about Trojan asteroids. So while they go through and play a little video there talking about uh, some Trojan asteroids, what they consist of, if you want to check out some of these videos, they are posted on NASA's YouTube channel uh, already. They've been leading up for the last couple of days. Uh, Kaj is watching from Finland. It's 12.15 p.m. there, convenient time for a Saturday. Joe Pilot's watching in from Hong Kong. Great to see you, Skull Stand. Hello. Red asteroids for up-close research at first as well. Apparently, the spectrum indicates possibility of therans and other organic material. That's true. There's a lot of firsts that could be uh, detected uh, during this 12-year-plus uh, yeah, this 12 -year plus mission. Uh, it's going to be really incredible to see what comes out of this and what this leads to for future missions. As we were saying, kind of talking in the chat, though, it's going to be amazing once Starship's working, you know, just think in 10 to 15 years, we could be launching, you know, the first 5, 10, 15 year crewed missions out to see these asteroids in person with a Starship, out to Saturn, to Jupiter. Um, these type of missions could become a reality with humans in the very near future, which is really absolutely incredible uh, for it. Tonight, they are launching from Slick 41 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Marcus, good to see you here in the chat. Hope you've got a, a nice spot there at Paradise Beach watching the launch. We are currently sitting at T-minus 16 minutes away from launch here tonight, and the weather is looking good. Marcus, how's it doing down there on the ground? Uh, what configuration of Atlas is chosen for this launch? Great question, because reason they've chosen the 401 configuration. Uh, so this is the... 
ooh, 40th launch that uh, has been selected uh, with this configuration. Uh, today marks the interesting update from ULA here. Today marks the 671st Atlas launch since 1957. It's the 89th launch of the Atlas V and the 40th launch of the 401 configuration. Kind of cloudy. Well, I hope it clears up for you there. Nonetheless, it should be... Uh, you guys should have a long view time, which is really nice, heading straight east. Let's get the show on the road, Lucy. Absolutely, Teresa. We're coming up at T-minus 15 minutes. They're into the final weather briefing. That uh, weather briefing's now complete. We are still got uh, 11 minutes left in this built-in T-minus 4-minute hold. So the clock should be actually at T-minus 4 minutes and holding. But it is a 30-minute hold. This is something very similar to what we saw during the Space Shuttle program where there were built-in holds that were always progressed through, whether there was issues or not, that are kind of there uh, to uh, help uh, yeah, alleviate any issues in the count should they arise. Tides high, waves kind of sound like thunder and distance. Oh, my. That could be interesting. But if you're just joining us, welcome. Take a moment. Let us know where you're watching from. If you guys have questions, you can send those in the chat. Tag us at the launch pad. We're going to listen in to this guest on NASA, and then we will be back to answer your guys' question live. You're watching our live launch coverage of Lucy right here on the launch pad. And just later this year, we're going to launch DART, which is the first collision experiment uh, trying to really deflect a potentially threatening uh, asteroid. You know, so, so for us, it's many parts and, ex you know, and of course, at the heart of it, Lucy, it's just absolutely the mission of discovery. Yeah, we're really doing a lot of amazing things, and I think that you have a lot to do with that. So thank you so much, Dr. Zerbukin. I really appreciate you being here today. Appreciate it, Megan. Thanks so much. Awesome. Daryl, back to you. All right. Thank you, Megan. And we're just seconds away from the NASA launch manager poll. So let's get out to Joshua and Mick to pick it up, guys. Hey, thanks, Daryl. Yes, uh, things, again, proceeding really well. Uh, appreciate the report from Will Ulrich because the weather is always the other side of the coin, right? We got the launch team in the technical. We got the weather in good shape. Uh, as you see there, the rocket venting and uh, having the condensation appear around the rocket as we would typically expect. So everything healthy and, and on track. Uh, like Daryl just mentioned, we will hear from Omar Baez, the NASA launch manager. He'll be polling the NASA team so that he can in turn report out on the ULA launch conductor poll that will happen a few minutes later. Uh, so that should happen right here at L minus 13 minutes. Let's listen in for that now. This is the NLM on the NLM net, uh, just providing an update. The uh, range did uh, notify us that uh, one side of uh, the JDMTA uh, command site. Hey, so let's go ahead and uh, um, we're going to step away from that for now. Um, and we're going to, obviously there's something developing there. Uh, we were expecting to get that poll. And so we want to be respectful of what's happening there. The technical data, we're not sure that that's going to be approved for release. Uh, so obviously we'll be standing by to, to pay attention to that and give you updates as we understand more. Uh, but do want to kind of get back on track with talking about the, uh, oh, we are hearing that we think Omar is going to pick up with this poll. Coming up now. NASA CE, go. SMA? SMA, go. SMD? SMD, go. NASA Mission Manager? NASA Mission Manager, go. LSP? LSP is go. Copy that. The NASA team's ready to release the hold at T minus four minutes. Yes, yeah, so Joshua, what we heard there from uh, NASA Launch Manager Omar Baez is he was basically just briefing his NASA team and spacecraft customer of an issue that the team, uh, that the range had notified them of with one of their downrange assets. It sounds, looks like it was uh, partially mission capable today. The team accepted that, and uh, they are ready to move forward, as you heard in the poll, that all systems are go for the NASA side. And uh, we'll be picking that up uh, as uh, Launch Conductor Scott Barney does his poll here in a little bit. Yeah, always a lot of things in play. Uh, we uh, will continue to track that. Again, a great sign that the team was able to work through that and approve uh, to move forward. Um, so we'll be back in a few minutes bringing you the final steps of the countdown uh, and a report up as we transition Lucy into internal power. Uh, but for now, Daryl, back to you. All right, thank you, Joshua and Mick. Lucy is going to visit as many asteroids in the faraway belt of Jupiter as we've ever discovered for near-Earth asteroids. And to get there, Lucy will need the right rocket and the right trajectory to carry out this historic mission. 
we headed out to ULA's vertical integration facility, where inside we were awestruck after walking onto a platform 18 stories above the ground, because just a few feet away was the Lucy spacecraft inside its protective fairing and on top of an Atlas V rocket. ULA was making final preparations to roll this entire launch vehicle out of the vertical hangar we were in and onto the launch pad. Dermain Oliver, good to see you, my good man. You too. Hey, thanks for coming out here and telling us about this flight trajectory and all the fun facts about Lucy going up in space. It's my pleasure. So, Jermaine, you are a flight design analyst with Launch Services Program. You know this flight pretty well. Tell me first about why we're launching at this specific time of year. We're trying to rendezvous with two different sets of asteroids that are on the Jupiter line, you know, Jupiter orbit. So to go to do that, you have to launch at a particular time to line up where the asteroids are going to be at. Because if you don't, you'll either get there too early or get there too late. Can you so, believe how close we're standing here next to this spacecraft? I've never been this close before. This is great. Let me ask you about this fairing. What's its purpose? The fairing purpose is to encapsulate the satellite throughout, you know, throughout the time it's going through the atmosphere until it gets into space. So let's talk a little bit about the orbit. So this spacecraft is going out 530 million miles away from the sun. That's far, and it takes a careful orbit to get there. Yes, what happens is you have to use Earth gravity assist to sling slot yourself to each of the different asteroid trojans. So Lucy weighs about the same weight as a mid-sized vehicle, 3,400 pounds or so. Yeah. So it's pretty heavy. What kind of thrust does this rocket need to get it up off the ground and into space. Max thrust on this particular rocket is about 930,000 pounds of thrust, and it get Lucy on a trajectory that's going about maybe 27,000, 28,000 miles per hour. Tell me about this rocket configuration, the Atlas 401. It's just a four meter fairing that works great for this mission because given the spacecraft's weight, about 1,500 kilograms, and where it's going, the energy that it's going to, this particular rocket fits perfectly with it. I'm really excited about the journey as it begins right here, right now, with this entire rocket and spacecraft rolling out to the pad. That's pretty cool. Yes, it is. I've never seen it before, actually. I'll be, I'm excited to see how this goes today. You want to jump on and ride with the MLB? Oh, no, thank you. I'm fine. Thank you pass on that? I'm okay. Okay. Oh, look there. It's moving. It's moving. Check it out. Wow. Well, Lucy's journey has begun. Isn't it amazing? Yes, it is. Lucy's on our way. Jarmaine Oliver with Launch Services Program. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, it was a pleasure being here. Thank you for having me. And as that rolled out, we had to take some pictures and uh, yeah. even a selfie because you know what? I feel like we're the last people to be that close to that spacecraft, spacecraft going so far away. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and few people get to be at the base of the pad. Even fewer get to be inside the VIF, especially at that moment of rollout. So that was a really cool opportunity awesome. that you had. Yeah. All right, we are uh, inside of L minus eight minutes and coming up on the launch conductor pole shortly. So we want to hand it over to Joshua and Mick to take us the rest of the way through the countdown. Joshua. Hey, thanks, Marie. Uh, I would love to say that rocketry is a team sport, uh, and that's what we're going to get to kind of hear with this launch conductor poll in just a minute. Four major teams at play this morning, NASA Launch Services Program responsible for the launch, United Launch Alliance providing the vehicle, the ride to space. We have the uh, Southwest Research Institute, the NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, and Lockheed Martin, part of the spacecraft team, and then the Space Force. Yeah, Joshua, we're very happy to have Space Force here as they uh, protect the range and look at the weather. They're also responsible for vehicle and personnel safety today. Status check to proceed with terminal count. Atlas systems, propulsion, go. Hydraulics, go. Pneumatics, go. LO2, go. Water, go. Centaur systems, propulsion, behind. go. Pneumatics, go. LO2, go. LH2, go. Hasgas, go. Electrical systems, airborne, go. Ground. Go. Facility. Go. RFFTS. Go. Flight Control. Go. GCQ. Go. Operation Support. Go. Com. Go. Umbilicals. Go. ECS. Go. Red Line Monitor. Go. Quality. Go. Ops Safety Manager. Go. ULA Safety Officer. Go. Vehicle System Engineer. Go. Anomaly Chief. Go. Range Coordinator. Clear to proceed. Launch Director. You have permission to launch. Proceeding with the count. ALC, verify T0 is set for 0934 Zulu. Verified. 
So Joshua, a uh, very successful poll there by launch conductor Scott Barney. As you also heard, we verified that T0 is set for uh, 0934 Zulu time. It's 534 local. Uh, very happy to hear everybody green and go. And in, in particular, our friends at the range there, uh, our Space Force friends, uh, gave a clear for the range today. That's awesome. They're doing their job not only with weather but the safety. Uh, we also heard a little earlier in the count this morning that the range reported there are no colas this morning, which are collision avoidance uh, assessments. So we are good for our first initial part of the launch window this morning, 534. All steps are complete prior to terminal count. Yeah, big thanks to the Space Launch Delta 45 folks for all their support. Uh, so looking ahead to terminal count, we just heard the call that the spacecraft is configured for flight. That includes being transitioned to internal power. Uh, and then, like I mentioned before, the next few steps are all about getting the launch vehicle and the spacecraft uh, able to live on their own. So those are the things coming up here. Uh, we do have this release of the built-in hold. Uh, the eagle-eyed viewers that can see behind us might have noticed that there's a clock sitting at T minus four minutes and holding. That's been that way for our entire show so far. That will then sync up with our L clock you see on screen at this moment, and those will count towards zero together. Again, everything looking great for liftoff on time here at, at uh, 534. Yeah, Joshua, as we come out of this hold, uh, you know, what's very impressive this morning is this Atlas 401. We heard Jarmaine talk about it. It's a 401 configuration, a four-meter fairing, zero solids on it, and one single uh, Centaur engine on the second stage. Uh, this is a great uh, configuration for the Lucy mission. It is the most common flown uh, configuration by United Launch Alliance, and uh, this will be the, the 89th uh, Atlas V uh, launching, so we're very proud of that. Two, one, mark. And there we go, the clocks are released, so we are ticking down here uh, towards liftoff. Ground pyro is enabled. Yeah, we'll hear right, the team securing a lot of the things getting their final now. configurations in. If you're just joining us, though, welcome. You are just in time. We're at T minus three minutes and 40 seconds and counting until liftoff of Lucy. We're going to switch over to our uh, the single view here uh, now that they won't be showing their hosts as we get to the last few minutes. But if you're just joining us, welcome. Make sure you smash that like button. We're just three and a half minutes away from launch of sending Lucy up to Jupiter to visit the Trojan asteroids, a very historic first mission of its kind, launching from Slick 41, Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Weather is 100% go. We just heard the uh, one of the last polls. All polls were go, so they are go for launch at T minus three minutes. So right about now, the Atlas uh, first stage liquid oxygen replenishment system uh, is being secured and the tanks are being pressurized uh, as the rocket is fully fueled and ready for launch. FTS internal. So there we heard the teams uh, securing the uh, topping and bringing the Atlas tanks to flight pressure. That's a huge milestone as we get ready for T0 this morning. The teams have finished putting locks and hydrogen on board and making sure that uh, all that 740,000 pounds of fuel is there for liftoff of Lucy. We also heard that the team uh, brought in the flight termination system arm. That is part of the range safety that is needed for the vehicle as we lift off this morning. Yeah, previewing what's what's to come ahead. So stay with us after liftoff. We'll be tracking with a couple burns of the Centaur uh, space. The launch sequencer has had the start command. The sequencer is now performing individual verification systems for the rest of the count as we are about T minus two minutes in counting. 159. Vehicle internal. 155. Launch sequencer start. 150. Securing Centaur LH2. Securing Centaur LO2. 140. Launch enabled. As we always do, let's see a go, no go in the chat. They are counting down T minus about 90 seconds until launch. Let's see a go in the chat. That flame you were seeing, that's them venting. That's totally normal to see. 120. OCU's armed. FCS count started. Rocket is armed, ready to go. T-minus 70 locked. seconds. The cape is green in One all minute. conditions for launch. Report range status. Range green. 
All right, so stay with us again after liftoff. Uh, we'll also have the voice chiming in from uh, Rob Kesselman from ULA. Uh, he'll be providing the launch vehicle ascent data. Forty. Staple at step three. So that's a great uh, sign right there, Stable seconds. Step 3, everything is at flight pressures. We're now the only thing left, Joshua, is that final status check uh, with the whole team. 25 seconds. Status check. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Go Lucy. There, go. Come on. Seven, six, six, five, five, four, four three, three, two, two one, one, zero. Ignition. Liftoff. Atlas V takes flight. Sending Lucy to uncover the fossils of our solar system. Tower clear. Rd 180 propellant utilization has gone to close with control. The vehicle has begun the pitch yaw roll maneuver. There she goes, beautiful now, clear height. Now, into flight. Vehicle is 0.6 miles in altitude, traveling at 939 miles per hour. Body 180 performance the continues to the at range this time. There, there she goes. Engine pump speeds and injector pressures are in family for this thrust level. Atlas vehicle attitude remains stable at this time. Attitude rates near zero in all, in all axes. Now at T plus 70 seconds into flight, vehicle is 4 miles in altitude, 0.2 miles downrange distance, traveling at 1,200 miles per hour. Mark 1, Alice is now supersonic. Vehicle is now passing through max Q, maximum dynamic pressure. The vehicle is now throttling down slightly. Body 180 engine parameters continue to look nominal after the prior adjustment to the thrust level. Approximately two minutes remain in the Atlas booster phase of flight. The Atlas V rocket weighs now just one half of what it did at launch, burning propellant at a rate of 2,600 pounds per second. Vehicle is now executing closed loop steering. Center 5 Central Reaction Control System is now pressurizing the flight levels. So beautiful launch sequence there. Uh, we do have uh, another minute and a half or so to go with the booster in operation. Uh, getting, what a beautiful shot uh, right there. Right now, just under three minutes into flight, Atlas is 33 miles in altitude, 59 miles downrange distance, traveling at 5,600 miles per hour. So Lucy being lifted up out of the atmosphere by the booster, getting on its way into a park orbit uh, before we get towards... Uh, All first stage vehicle systems are operating as expected at this time. Future, uh, future portions of the launch activity, we have the, the Centaur multiple burns ahead and spacecraft separation. And the big milestone we should see Josh coming up is booster engine cutoff, which would be the first stage cutoff and then stage separation. The main separation. engine is now throttling to maintain a constant 5G acceleration limit. We're going to see a few things happen pretty rapidly. The, the booster will cut off just after four minutes. And then within the next 15 seconds after that, we should see the Atlas separate from the Centaur and then the Centaur engine ignite for its first burn. Centaur has begun the boost phase chill-down sequence. And the RD-180 is now throttling to maintain a constant 4.6 G acceleration limit. Boost phase chill-down sequence has completed. 
and we have BICO, booster engine cutoff, and a successful stage separation event. So what you're seeing on screen is an animation that's being driven by actual telemetry. Booster data. on the RL-10. So we are watching these things uh, in an animation happen here, but they're happening in real time as well. And as best one, we have ignition for the first burn. All right, so there we go. Uh, we should see the, fair, the fairing jettison here. We have indication of good payload fairing jettison. And there we go. All right, Nick, so that wraps up the, the first round of, of major milestones here. Uh, still very much in the middle of dynamic flight. The uh, key system on the RL-10 is now in an open loop burn-off mode to burn off excess fuel in the early portion of this burn. So walk us quickly through, Mick, what are we looking for uh, in the next, in this burn and the next one? So this burn is going to end with uh, Miko uh, getting uh, Centaur and Lucy into its park orbit around Earth. And then we will then get into MESS-2, which will get us into that transfer orbit, getting Lucy on its way. Awesome. So that's going to do it for now, uh, finishing up the initial launch activities, everything sounding like it's going perfectly. Uh, Daryl, back to you. Thank you, Joshua and Mick. A beautiful launch out here from our vantage point. Incredible. All right. Lucy was built at the Lockheed Martin facility in Colorado before arriving at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station for launch. Engineers at Lockheed's Waterton facility use lessons learned from prior spacecraft like New Horizons and OSIRIS-REx to build Lucy. And in July, Lucy was packed up and flown on board a United States Air Force C-17 cargo plane from Colorado to the launch and landing facility. They're going to talk a little bit about uh, what she has been through, but uh, that is it. Lucy is officially on her way into the parking orbit so keep that in mind they do need to finalize her orbit around the earth and then we'll do another burn and send her on her way out uh towards jupiter to rendezvous with those trojan asteroids here but we'll, we'll stay live we still got some time until that will occur so we'll listen back in here to this update uh, but if you guys have questions send those in and we will be answering those here live on air in the next couple of minutes i was just fantastic yeah to see it rise over the clouds because you know we lost it a little bit because of some cloud coverage but then it just rose out of it it was so beautiful and yeah. you know i really wanted to talk to you because you your team at lockheed martin space knew that you were going into a project that would require you to develop a spacecraft that would travel farther than any other other solar powered spacecraft yeah. ever. I mean, was that intimidating? You know, it was a, it was a really exciting challenge to, to solve, right? And obviously, the most prominent feature of Lucy is their big solar arrays. Each one is about the length of a bus. And, um, you know, what we did is we basically just broke the problem down into smaller pieces and then applied systems thinking to make sure that the design trades we were doing uh, didn't impact or that we fully understood the impacts for over the 12 year mission. So, you know, being the farthest uh, solar powered spacecraft is certainly something that was difficult to prepare for, um, as is going to a record eight asteroids in one mission. Uh, but that's why we have such a comprehensive test like you fly program at Lockheed Martin, and we took it through the ringer at our facility in Denver. Yeah, and you did it all within 14 months. That's during a pandemic. That's incredible. Can you talk to me about the challenges of that? Yeah, you know, it's it's really awe-inspiring. I mean, to, to be able to, to build a one-of-a-kind one spacecraft during normal circumstances is incredible. And the team just really pulled together, didn't miss a beat connected and collaborated, you know, made sure that we didn't uh, didn't have any mistakes. And it really accelerated some of our digital transformation initiatives too, having to, to work during the pandemic. And not a single shift was missed during integration and test due wow. to COVID. So team just did an awesome job, leadership with the preparation and the over communication and the transparency. And then all the team, you know, just didn't let their commitment to, to Lucy waver. And I think the thing that I'm most proud about actually is, is that through it all, we still continue to all of our STEM events, all our mentoring, our coaching, uh, Lockheed Martin, NASA, Southwest Research in Institute, hundreds of thousands of hours in, into that. So it was really, really a great job. And really quick, you also built the antenna that's on there that's going to help us communicate with Lucy. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, we did. A uh, six and a half foot uh, wide antenna that, that we built. Main job is to is to do the communication between the spacecraft. And, um, you know, it's also going to send back some of the first images of the Trojans. So I the whole team is super excited yeah, for that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank yeah. you so much, Aria. I really appreciate you being here today Thanks and so much. for bringing Lucy to life. So thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, Daryl, back to you.
All right, thank you, Megan. And in case you're just joining us, we here at uh, NASA are at the beginning of Lucy's 530-mile journey to the Trojan asteroids beyond the sun, going to the same orbit, Marie, as Jupiter. That's right. It was a beautiful launch here. We could see it light up the water behind us, and we actually he had a gator in the water behind us. Oh, <laughs> more us than 530 miles. Yeah. Uh, Lucy is named after a skeleton fossil more than 3 million years old. Lucy was an early early human ancestor, and the Trojan asteroids are fossils, too, of how planets were formed. So they're going to get a little deeper into uh, some of the asteroids that they are going to hopefully be studying with Lucy here and how they connect to kind of the early studies of humans here on Earth. But if you guys have questions, you can send those into the chat. We'll be answering those here live on air, but keeping them uh, with the stream here and then listening in anytime we see them talking to an actual person uh, coming up. Brian, proud to be a human right now. We don't get to say that often. I love that, Brian. Uh, Aaron had a clear shot the entire time all the way up into main engine cutoff. Uh, even that far away, you can still see the sense of how fast uh, the baby's actually moving. Uh, that's so cool, Aaron. I'm so glad that you got to see that from your driveway. That's awesome. Uh, waiting here for Marcus. Hopefully, he got a good view from the beach as well. Uh, but, uh, yeah, absolutely uh, a great launch here. Let's take a listen in for an update. The launch from the Atlas Space Flight Operations Center was none, on our, none other than uh, NASA's Associate Administrator, Bob Cabana. He is standing by with... Uh, Blair Allen of NASA Edge. Um, actually, uh, they're telling me that we lost audio uh, with that group, so we will we will come back to that um, if we can. But uh, while they try to work out their audio issues, but Daryl, uh, you know, we had we had a really unmatched view of of launch here. It was just spectacular. Yeah, it was incredible because uh, we're sitting. You can't really tell, but this behind us is the Kennedy Basin, right. the Turn Basin, where they brought in. Uh, you know, the space shuttle uh, main uh, tank, mm -hmm. as well as just recently uh, the core stage for the Artemis rocket, which is in uh, the VAB right now getting stacked. You're looking at the flight of Centaur and Lucy. We are L plus 11 minutes and 26 seconds as we cruise along. And we want to talk a little bit now about the message that Lucy is going to be sending. That's right. Uh, Lucy is carrying something on board. Um, aside from her scientific instruments, she's got something a little more philosophical. There is actually a plaque affixed to the side of the Lucy spacecraft, and it contains quotes and messages from artists, poets, and thought leaders. And the plaque is meant to serve as a time capsule of sorts for our own descendants. You see, after Lucy's 12-year mission is complete, the spacecraft will remain on a stable orbit, traveling back and forth between the Earth and the Trojan asteroids for perhaps hundreds of thousands of years. And one day, in the distant future, our descendants may be able to retrieve Lucy. Uh, there it is, this, the... Uh, the plaque you can see on the mm. side of the spacecraft. Wow. This was before uh, Lucy was packed inside the payload fairing. Uh, but this is meant to be uh, a relic for our and for our descendants uh, of the early days of humanity's exploration of the solar system. Uh, and when they do, they will see some great messages. We'll see those. Uh, we'll talk more about those in just a couple of minutes. Um, oh, we actually yeah. have. We do have it. Yeah. Um, so this is um, a representation. It's hidden a little bit behind your computer, Daryl. Oh, yeah, um, let me get that down. <laughs> Yeah. But this is the actual plaque on the spacecraft is about a tenth of the size of this. So this is blown up. Yeah. Um, but it's got um, a diagram on it. This shows the positions of the planets as they are today on the day of the Lucy launch. That's right. And there are some great quotes. You mentioned some of the great philosophers and uh, thought leaders over time down. While they're talking about the the plaque here, we have had confirmation of main engine cutoff one. The first main engine cutoff of the Centaur. This means the vehicle has now officially reached orbit. It will coast until the escape burn, uh, which is expected to occur in about 25 minutes. So we'll be staying live through that. So make sure to stay with us. Send in your questions. We'll be answering those live here. We want to listen in a little bit more here uh, to NASA, but we wanted to jump in there. Miko is confirmed. We got a question here from Because Reasons. Do you think, think Vulcan will get the B4 engines from Blue Origin before Atlas has to retire? Yes, 
Absolutely. We've heard lots from Tori Bruno more recently. Lots of stuff happening with the BE4s. Uh, so I, I feel good that they will have those uh, in the near future. Look at uh, some more of the messages uh, that we... So they are working towards that. We've had confirmation at the T plus 13 minutes and 12 second mark uh, of that main engine cutoff if you are just joining us. Marcus says no. No to what, Marcus? I'm not sure what you're saying no to, Marcus. Aaron, check your Twitter. Awesome. Pulling it up right now here. Let's take a look. Oh, we got a video just sent in from Marcus here. Oh, we got an awesome thing from Aaron here. That's so cool. Aaron, can I pull that up on stream? Is that okay? Let me know in the chat if that is okay, and I will work to do that here without leaking your Twitter. That's really cool. Thanks for sharing that. Appreciate it. Uh, we, I know we got also a video in here from Marcus. Let's take a look at it. See if we can get it patched in. Well, we'll give it a try. That's okay. That's cool. Let's see if we can patch this in as well. Awesome. We're going to try to pull this up here from Aaron. We're also going to try to pull up a video here from Marcus. So bear with us here just for a brief moment. We're going to go just over to this feed here first. See if this will... Not sure it's going to want to do it for us there, Aaron, but we will. We can share that over on the Discord as well. And let's see if we can get Marcus's video up here. If you guys were down in the region and ended up taking any photos or videos, you can send those in. I'd love to give those a share for you uh, on the stream. If you guys have questions, you can send those in as well. There we go. So this video that we are pulling up here is from Marcus. Let's switch this over here. Now, how far away were you, Marcus? You might be driving, so that might be hard to answer. I know you messaged us in the chat earlier, but we're going to patch this in. This is a replay of launch from Marcus's perspective uh, just down the, uh, down the coastline there. Let's pull that back. There we go. It's a cool view.
So this is about, I want to say about 10 miles or so. 8, 10 miles. Still a really great view. You can see that cloud cover. There was just that thick layer of cloud there tonight. It was technically clear weather because there was no rain, there was no thunderstorm cells, things like that. But there was still that layer of cloud that they were fighting Thirty or so miles south of the pad. Okay, you were further than I thought you were. That's not bad for thirty miles. That's really good for thirty miles. Hey, for thirty miles on an iPhone, that's pretty good. You got a good track on it too. Really see how it just lights up the night sky there. You know, there's a little bit more at the end of the video here for my first kind of skim through it. If you're just joining us, though, we are waiting for the uh, transfer burn, the leaving Earth burn for Lucy. It is uh, going to, it's already in orbit, and we are now waiting for that burn to occur. We've got a question here from. Estan, Estine, I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Uh, how long will Lucy take before she expands her solar panels? About one hour after liftoff, she is scheduled to extend her solar panels for the first time and be ready for her mission. So what they're going to do is they have officially made it to orbit. In about 20 minutes or so from now, they will do their escape burn, which will be what sends Lucy on her way away from Earth, which is always that very big moment, because once they do that, she is gone, and she will enter that first kind of slingshot uh, orbit, as she will be using multiple Earth gravity assists uh, to make her way to Jupiter uh, multiple times on the different trajectories she'll be going uh, for it. But uh, really awesome video there for Marcus. Thanks so much for sending that in. Appreciate it. Aaron did send us in a video here as well, which is really great. Twitter just don't doesn't want to let me download it right now, but... <laughs> Excuse me. Awesome thing as well. But if you guys have taken videos because you were down there or photos, make sure you can tweet those out to us uh, on Twitter at, at TLPN underscore official. Or if you want, you can send them over on our Discord as well. We'd love to check those out and possibly share them on air for you. Aaron says, great shot, Marcus. Davey, I see the stars are visible. Geez, best on saying anything. <laughs> yeah. But uh, a really great launch there from uh, great cloud shots. Sonic Boom looks majestic. Yeah. No, it looks like a it was a really great launch here uh, tonight. Uh, the average speed of Lucy when she passes these Trojan asteroids is going to be 15,000 miles per hour. We're going to listen in here to an update from the ULA program manager. Near perfect so far. Uh, we, we never uh, claim success until we separate and get the spacecraft where it wants to be. But uh, so far, the first stage was great. The countdown was very quiet, and uh, it's a beautiful launch so far. Great, great to hear. Um, this is a, a mission unlike any other before it. Can you tell us exactly how unique the trajectory was for the Atlas V on this mission? Yeah, so certainly the trajectory for the spacecraft is very unique, uh, probably never been done before. Uh, but from an Atlas uh, standpoint, we've launched many planetary missions over the years, and uh, we just kind of did our standard thing in order to get the spacecraft ready to go. Um, you know, getting ready for this mission through COVID uh, was a challenge for, um, I know, many people. Uh, were there any challenges that you had to overcome? Is there any kind of anecdote that you can tell about this mission? Yeah, so uh, the team, it's been a very uh, 
aggressive week or a couple of weeks with us. You know, we launched Landsat uh, 9 just a few weeks ago, turned around uh, uh, the end of the week. So we launched on Monday and we turned around and had uh, the wet dress rehearsal here for Lucy on Friday and uh, then turned around and did our Vulcan uh, PTT test here. So it's been really a, a very exciting week for the team here, and the team has worked really hard through all the COVID stuff, through all of the activities, uh, in order to maintain the launch date. And here we are, right at the beginning of the window, and uh, a beautiful launch so far. Absolutely. Well, Scott, uh, we wish you the best of luck uh, over the next 12 years, and uh, thanks for joining us here on the show today. Uh, Marie, Daryl, back to you to learn more about science. All right, Scott and Franklin, thank you very much. As you look at the bottom of your screen, I want to remind you we have a progress bar, which is tracking where we're going. You can see that we had the main engine cut off. We're awaiting that second burn of the Centaur, and of course, we'll have all of that for you. But we have about an hour to go before signal acquisition from Lucy. Only then will the team be able to breathe a sigh of relief. So let's hear from some of the scientists about their passion for Lucy in their own words. Hi, my name is Tanya Douglas Bradshaw and I'm the project manager for the Lucy project, which will be the first mission to the Trojan asteroids. Building a spacecraft is quite exciting. I worked uh, many decades as a mechanical engineer, really focused on thermal and heat transfer. And so when you work in that capacity, you are supporting the development of spacecraft as well as instruments. Hi, my name is Dr. Carly Howitt, and I'm the instrument scientist of the MVIP camera on Lucy. I love working on Lucy for so many reasons but one of them is being able to explore the universe from the comfort of my own office. So I don't have to don diving gear or, you know, go into these dangerous or hard situations. I get to enjoy the data as it comes back from the comfort of my office and explore the universe that way. My name is Corey Preichel and I am the mechanical operations lead for the interplanetary spacecraft, Lucy. My job is to plan and lead major mechanical operations such as spacecraft transportations, spacecraft crane lifts, or testing of so, major... little, little update here while they're playing this video here. We are officially now halfway through the coast phase. ULA has given an update that the Centaur systems uh, all remain good and in Earth orbit. Uh, the vehicle continues to have its quiet coast phase and is heading to a very precise point in space where the second engine will fire and it will carry itself off on its way uh, to uh, to Jupiter and to these Trojan uh, asteroids here. Um, they are now doing some uh, system checks as well, making sure that all telemetry and pressurization of all the tanks are good. And so far, everything is showing tank pressure. Battery voltages are good. And the small roll that you can see on your screen here, uh, that that roll for the uh, craft is uh, on target as well. If you're just joining us, wanted to uh, say welcome to Eddie. I know there's a few other new people here, so if you're new, first time here tonight, let us know. We'd love to welcome you here. Let us know where you're watching from. If you're new and haven't met me before, welcome. My name's Zach. I'm the host here at the Launchpad. Here at the Pad, it's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow. And we believe space is better together, so we invite you to join our crew by subscribing, liking the video, joining our Discord. We've got you guys up on the iPad here uh, tonight, so you can jump on there, say hello, uh, and be part of that community 24-7. Thanks for the 50 likes, guys. I appreciate it. But uh, at this point, we're uh, coming up about 15 minutes or so away from when we were expecting to see that Centaur engine light up for the second time, uh, sending Lucy on her way uh, to Jupiter and the Trojan asteroids. We do know about an hour after uh, launch is when they plan on opening up the solar arrays for the first time. I don't believe that we'll be live or NASA at that time as it will take them a little bit of time uh, to get acquisition of signal. It sounds like T plus one hour mark. So we'll wait and see uh, just how close they are to that once they do the insertion burn. Um, 
but uh, they're talking a little bit more about just some of the labels and uh, honorary things that are on board Lucy's fairing uh, and on board uh, of the Lucy craft itself. Any amazing technology now? Absolutely. Austin, hello. Is 389 your area? Is your coat? No. Electric, what is that animation from? So this is one of their... Uh, the animation you're seeing on screen, that is from NASA and ULA. Uh, that is the current animation of what Lucy is doing uh, as they uh, slowly go uh, and prepare for uh, that second burn. I did also want to mention Justin. Thank you so much. Or Justine. Let me know what it is, Justin or Justine. Uh, thank you so much for your super chat again there during the launch. Uh, I really appreciate that supporting the channel in that way and celebrating Lucy's launch. Nick is in North Wales in the UK. Good to see you, Nick. Uh, great to have you here in the chat. If you guys are wanting to, you can send in questions here at the Launchpad. We love answering your questions, and we try to do it for free. So you can send those in the chat, and we'll be answering those. We're really excited to be launching a brand new weekly show right here on the Launchpad, starting up in a couple of weeks, uh, where you will be able to uh, catch up on everything that's happened in the last week, look at the things coming up in the week ahead uh, in relation to space, and then we're going to have a whole half of the show dedicated solely to answering your guys' live comments, questions, and topics, and we're excited to have you with us there. We're either joined by another guest, so let's listen in to maybe a little bit of an update here, uh, and we'll continue answering your questions as they come in. You're watching our live launch coverage of Lucy right here on the Launchpad. To your father. I, it was really, um, really great. I mean, I usually work on the, the missions and things, and so sitting on console, so um, it's, it was really great to be able to see it from this vantage point out here at OSB2. Fantastic, fantastic view from up there, and night launches are always spectacular, and so just really, uh, really, really enjoyed it. What did LSP mean to your father, the launch services program, and then you following in his footsteps? Yeah, so like... Um, LSP, I think he, he really embodied a lot of the things that LSP stands for, like a, a good family man, as, as, as uh, we said, um, really dedicated to, to the work, dedicated to his family, and um, always curious, always learning, learning new about science missions and things like that, um, really, really meant a lot to him. So I think he, he, he definitely enjoyed his 20 plus years with uh, LSP and his all his time with NASA for sure. And Jared, we know your dad was one of the founding members of LSP from its earliest days in the 90s, and now you work for the program yourself. Yeah. I got to ask, did his influence kind of steer you in that direction? Oh yeah, I would say absolutely. Um, yeah, in 1998, I was I was only seven years old, and so every uh, afternoon, pick me up from school or whatnot, go home, and at, over over dinner, we have conversations about what the the last uh, science mission was, what what was coming up with LSP, and so he always encouraged me to, to do whatever I wanted. But I definitely in, enjoyed um, going into engineering, um, and I ended up coming to LSP. I think in my heart, I always knew I was gonna I was always gonna <laughs> yeah. end up with LSP, and I'm, uh, I'm very glad I did. And so enjoyed the the couple of years we got to work together and and chair uh, more from the business side from him and more from the engineering side from me. It was a nice uh, give and take. So really enjoyed our time for sure. Yeah, and glad you got to actually enjoy it as a spectator for a change yeah. instead of uh, working. It was very uh, relaxing. It was nice. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah. And there was some overlap between you and your father at uh, LSP. Yeah, so I finished my master's um, in mechanical engineering in 2015, and so we worked together almost five years. So it was really nice. Like in the on some afternoons, like later in the week, he'd come by. We, we were we're not morning people, so we'd come by in the <laughs> afternoon and chit chat about how things were going and and what our plans for the weekend were. So it was nice to just pass by him and and kind of talk a little bit of a little bit of work, a little bit of personal stuff at the end of the day, and it was it was really enjoyable. To, yeah, to well, be able as to be a with him. That's awesome. Yeah. As a as a non morning person myself, I used to be. <laughs> appreciate you getting up yeah. early with us. <laughs> it was well worth it. Well worth it. Thank you so much, Jared. Thank you all. Thank you. All right. Thank you for being here. All right. Learning what an asteroid is made of without coming into contact with it takes the right scientific instruments. We'll talk about that in a moment. But first, let's check in with Megan Cruz on top of OSB2 with another program scientist. Megan. 
Hey there, Daryl. Yeah, now I have Tom Statler. Tom, what did you think of the launch today? Oh, it was absolutely beautiful. Absolutely. I just couldn't have, couldn't have hoped for a more spectacular launch. Yeah, and uh, you know, you're the program scientist on this mission. Can you talk to us about what that role entails? Uh, sure. I mean, all of our missions have program scientists at headquarters. We're the main science advocate for the mission, and we also work with the mission teams kind of as coaches to make sure that mm. the science ambitions that they have for the mission fit with NASA processes. Gotcha. And we saw Lucy lift off about 30 minutes ago. Can you talk to us about how her three main instruments are going to work together to study the Trojans? Sure. So Lucy has three main instruments. There's the LORI, which is a high-resolution black and white camera, LORALF, that is a spectroscopic camera, and LATES, that is a thermal imager, like a, a no-touch thermometer. And so we'll be able to get detailed images of the landforms, the craters, cliffs, wow. landslides, anything else that's been going on on the surfaces. Uh, LORALF will be able to tell us about composition, so we'll get an in indication of the mineralogy, the chemical composition, and uh, LATES will tell us from the temperature readings, uh, what's the texture of the surface? Is it rocky? Is it uh, sandy? Is it gravelly? They are all work together to tell us what, what's going on on these asteroids. Wow, without even landing on them, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And we know that Lucy was named after the Lucy mm -hmm. fossil. The Lucy fossil was named after the Beatles song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. And actually, Lucy actually has a diamond on board. Can you talk to us about that? It does. So uh, the LATES instrument, that touchless thermometer, mm -hmm. is, uh, is an interferometer. And people who are in the instrumentation know what that means. But in an interferometer, you need to divide the incoming light into two paths. And so you need a device, an optical device called a beam splitter. And one of the best ways to make a beam splitter is to make it out of synthetic diamond. So there is a synthetic diamond, not a natural diamond. It's a pretty big one. I understand it's about 20 carats, which wow. would make a big Could piece make a of good jewelry. diamond, right? But yeah. It's an <laughs> industrial piece, of, uh, piece of, our, of, of synthetic diamond that's really essential for getting these temperature readings on the surfaces of the Trojan asteroids. Awesome. And you're also the program scientist for DART. That's scheduled to launch uh, next month. Can you tell mm -hmm. us about that experiment? I can. Well, DART, DART, like Lucy, is going to an asteroid, and that's where the similarity ends. Mm, okay. Because DART, uh, Lucy, of course, is going to the Trojan asteroids and the outer solar system, and DART is going to a near-Earth asteroid, not so much with the intent of studying it, but to demonstrate that we have the technological ability to be able to deflect an asteroid mm. if we're ever in a situation where there's an asteroid on collision course with Earth. There is not one right. now. No, no known asteroid is on a collision course with Earth, and the asteroid that we're going to collide with deliberately with the DART spacecraft is not a danger to Earth, and there's nothing that we can do to make it a danger to the Earth. But we're going to test our ability to uh, target an asteroid to execute a kinetic impact, that is, run a spacecraft into it, and then we're going to test the asteroid's response to that impact. How much do we move it by and how effective that will be to protect Earth in the future? Mm -hmm. Sounds like a movie. Strange, huh? <laughs> <laughs> No, maybe not uh, Not with uh, as dramatic a sound, uh, a script as some of the past movies, but it'll be very exciting uh, when we execute the kinetic impact and then get the data from ground-based telescopes afterwards that tells us what we actually accomplished. Great, Tom. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being here. Thank Marie, you. back to you. All right, thank you, Megan. If you're just joining us, we had a spectacular launch this morning in Florida. NASA's Lucy launched... When you try to make a smooth transition and it just doesn't work. Apparently. <laughs> uh, about 36 minutes ago, and the spacecraft lifted off on a United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket from Space Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. That was at 5.34 a.m. Eastern Time. And in just a little bit, we expect to hear confirmation of spacecraft separation. And there's a replay of the launch from this morning. A beautiful shot there as you see the Atlas V launching away from Space Launch Complex 41 here at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. It was a beautiful launch, and every launch is always a little different, right? We had mm -hmm. some clouds up high, and it yeah. went behind them, and then popped back out. Yeah. I, I love that. I love I love when it illuminates the clouds, because you don't, I mean, it's, it's pitch dark behind us now, and so you don't even know they're there, and the rocket just lights up the entire sky, and it's stunning. It's like a sunrise. Wonderful. All right, the Lucy spacecraft, named after the early human fossil and the famous Beatles song, is just beginning a... So while they continue their story here, we are now less than four minutes away, about T-minus three minutes, until we are expecting to see engine startup. You can see those RCS thrusters firing uh, on the uh, Centaur second stage, or the Atlas second stage, uh, preparing, orienting Lucy uh, for her Earth exit burn. Uh, 
Uh, so this is what we'll be sending Lucy on her way uh, to these Trojan asteroids. Uh, ULA confirmed that all the RCS thrusters are firing as planned, uh, settling the propellant in the tanks. So they are ready for the re uh, second engine startup. Um, but everything is performing well. The batteries are charged uh, and are also reporting uh, go for this uh, second burn here of the Centaur second stage of tonight's Atlas V 401 configuration rocket. Just a single Centaur stage on the second stage here. Uh, Lucy, not that heavy of a craft compared to what some of the stuff Atlas has launched in the past. Uh, but will soon be on her way out of Earth's orbit, uh, and then we'll be able to be separated from that second stage. We'll then work on opening her solar arrays uh, and beginning her long, uh, about three and a half to four year journey out to the Trojan asteroids, expecting the first flyby to occur in late 2025 uh, with multiple flybys over the course of about two to three years uh, then, and then we'll begin its journey uh, back around Earth uh, to the second set of asteroids uh, for flybys in the early 2030s. Should be about a minute or so away from expecting to see that uh, burn occur uh, of the second stage. We don't have a set time on how long this burn is going to be, but uh, it will be uh, setting it off on its 12-year mission, uh, removing it from the Earth's atmosphere or Earth's, or Earth's orbit. You have to take me back to that day when you discovered Lucy in Ethiopia back in 1974. Tell me how you found her. Well, it's amazing. It'll be 50 years since that discovery, wow. two years from now. I was a young anthropologist. I was searching in the... It's T plus 40 minutes and 25 seconds. The fuel and oxidizer pre-starters are officially uh, underway and having sequence. The uh, body rates have nulled out according to ULA. I'm not sure what that is. And we are standing by for ignition in about 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. There is normally a little bit of a delay on these animations here. And there we go. It looks like it's starting up there. And we have second stage ignition. And there we go. That engine is firing. And Lucy is officially beginning her burn, leaving Earth behind. The single... RL-10C-1 engine has reignited and will be taking Lucy from her parking orbit into her Earth departure trajectory off to the Trojan asteroids. We're still waiting to hear how long this burn will occur, but you can see at the top right of the screen, and we'll make this a little bigger just at this point here. Ooh. The top right of the screen, you can see the uh, perigee and the apogee, and we can see that that apogee is now starting to be stretched as Lucy begins to make her way uh, out of the uh, Earth orbit. Uh, ULA confirming this will be a six-minute burn. Uh, it's the second of the two burns of the launch sequence, uh, and should this burn be complete, they will separate Lucy. Uh, and Lucy will be on her way. But you can see there that apogee starting to increase quite dramatically, passing through 3,000 kilometers. It was just at uh, a couple hundred a few moments ago. But Lucy slowly making her way out of an Earth uh, orbit and inclination. Today's inclination was uh, about 28 degrees there, as we can see. Uh, and we can see that their uh, launch time is uh, approaching 2,600 seconds, or about 42 and a half minutes. Burn is. So main engine start did occur uh, just a few minutes ago, and this will get uh, Centaur and Lucy into its transfer orbit, leaving the park orbit around Earth, heading into that orbit, heading uh, to get Lucy on her way to the Trojan asteroids. So very important burn. This will last about six minutes. Uh, and to get her the velocity and everything she needs to go to get on her way to, uh, to to the Trojan asteroids. There you go. So just under about four minutes left in this burn. Uh, so going back today, uh, we did kick off at 5:34 on the button uh, and Obviously, got a report. Storage um, pressures are stable during the burn. Uh, from storage bottle pressures look good. 
from the ULA commentator Rob Kesselman. Uh, ULA always expecting excellence, but he reported that it the booster performed better than expected. Uh, I'm not sure what's better than excellent, but they got it today. <laughs> yeah, that, that just means we had some uh, great performance from the first stage booster in the RD-180, uh, putting Centaur into the proper order uh, and that injection that they needed uh, for, for getting Lucy on her way. And now that we're into main engine start two, uh, that just means we have a, a more precise uh, uh, trajectory and everything's looking good spacecraft customer and ULA and launch services provider pro, uh, program are very happy at this point. Yeah. You can see in the top right of your screen, Lucy now having an apogee of over 13,500 kilometers uh, and increasing by a couple hundred kilometers a second uh, as she begins that, uh, you know, when you're circulating the orbit, you're going, you're going, and then you go. Uh, you know, you're still going to curve a bit. But uh, she's making her way there. Today's launch marks the 260th flight of a Centaur. Really great record for ULA. The second burn is occurring now. What's really interesting is the Atlas V actually had the ability to launch Lucy within a 75-minute launch window, even though it's an instantaneous uh exit trajectory burn and this is because of the steering capability of the atlas 5 and how it could launch and actually re-steer the atlas to make sure that lucy got to the correct escape point and burned correctly at that escape point so uh, a very old proven rocket uh but a very smart rocket by ula Aaron, you're heading to bed. Thanks so much for being here. Glad you got to see it. Uh, and we will see you next time. Once we get confirmation of this burn being complete, we're probably going to wrap it up there as well. But Lucy passing through 55,000 kilometers at Apogee, now adding a couple thousand kilometers uh, to her Apogee per second. All telemetry is showing that it is still nominal as Lucy continues passing through 100,000 kilometers, adding now over 5,000 kilometers to her apogee per second, approaching now adding 15, 20,000 uh, kilometers per second. So you can see here, this is the part where these burns become exponential, uh, now doubling there we go, we're passing a million, there's a billion, and there is a negative number. So let's listen in here. Gravity. This is actually a misconception. You're in what we call microgravity. microgravity yeah. Yes. Uh, and so as you're uh, in orbit, you're essentially falling around the Earth. Uh, and so but that gravity is still about 98% of what it is. But that apogee is now a negative number, which means Lucy is on an escape trajectory. Lucy is on her way from Earth orbit and on her way to the Trojan asteroid. So very exciting moment for tonight and for all of the Lucy team. Uh, that's where these two groups of Trojan asteroids hang We're out. We're going to stand by uh, for Miko 2. And these are actually nowhere two. near Jupiter. Uh, so they're Jupiter's... They're Jupiter's, sorry, we're getting calls here. Uh, good performance here on the Centaur still as they're about to wrap up this uh, this second burn. Again, uh, preparing for spacecraft Second Miko 2. And there's Miko 2 confirmed. T plus 46 minutes, 45 seconds, the second engine has cut off, and the Centaur has put Lucy on an interplanetary trajectory into our solar right there. system. Cut off too. That means uh, Centaur has done its job, performed, Centaur and uh, will be uh, system. coasting for just a few minutes as we get ready for spacecraft separation, and Centaur makes sure she's pointing in the right direction. That's right. Uh, and so, just finishing that thought, the Lagrange points four and five are roughly equidistant uh, from the the Sun and Jupiter, making isosceles or equilateral triangles. Uh, if you if you're ready for your math at six a.m. Uh, or whatever time it is right now, uh, we're we're watching our our, our mission clock here. Uh, and so, uh, essentially, they are the same distance from Jupiter as Jupiter is. We are seeing that we're about 10 minutes away from spacecraft separation. Uh, Centaur is now reorienting the spacecraft to its deployment altitude, uh, which will be a little bit higher in the perigee. Uh, but then Lucy will be on her way. But uh, she's already on her way, her trajectory. There's no turning her around now. But uh, in about 10 minutes, we're expecting Lucy separation. So we'll stay tuned for that. Answer some last-minute questions. We got Ricardo in the chat from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Hello, my friend. Good to see you. If you guys are just joining us, let us know where you're watching from. We'd love to welcome you here.
Deborah, see you next time. Have a good one. Stay safe and try to get some sleep. Thanks, Deborah. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for being here. Appreciate you being in the chat and hanging out as always. Yeah, we're going to hang out for these last about nine and a half minutes and then we are going to hit the hay from there. But uh, we want to see this. Uh, we've been here this long. We, we may as well stick around and see uh, spacecraft separation. But you have a great night. Thanks for being here, Deborah. We'll see you next time. If you are new here to the Launchpad, take a moment, engage that like and subscribe button. It really does help us out here at the Launchpad. If you haven't yet, take a moment, follow us over on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Twitch. We're on all the social media, so you can find us either at the Launchpad or at TLPN underscore dot official, depending on the platform. Also, if you haven't yet, join our Discord. It's totally free to do so. We hang out in there pretty much 24-7. We got people around the world hanging out in there. So you can always send in your questions, chat, share your stuff, uh, and be connected into our awesome community. Know about live streams coming up. If you do become a YouTube or a Patreon member, you get access to behind the scenes, early access to stuff, uh, and things like that. Listen in here. Everyone, uh, you know, Dr. Hal Levinson, who is the Lucy PI, has a vision, and it takes a team of hundreds to bring that vision to fruition. How long have you uh, been working on this project? So I joined Lucy about three years ago. Uh, joined the team as the deputy project manager, and then about two years ago, um, became the project manager. Now. Do you have any, like, exciting stories to tell about this mission? Because, you know, you all had to work through COVID to get this thing up and running. Yeah, it, uh, you know, COVID happened in March 2020 unexpectedly. And um, there was a lot of uncertainty around that. And, um, but this team um, and this spacecraft development led by Lockheed Martin, um, quickly, rapidly, without missing a beat, put together a plan to enable us to um, re-engineer the the integration and test program. I know with within the, like the last two years, the uh, components for the spacecraft were uh, you know compiled, but it wasn't even put together. How did you get that all up and running? Basically in a little over a year. Yeah. So, I mean, the the plan, you're right. When when the pandemic happened, we were about six, five or six months away from the start of our spacecraft integration and test program. Um, and so there was a lot of uncertainty, uh, but the team, the entire team came together and really devised a way to uh, keep people safe, do social distancing, social distancing, adding the capability for folks to monitor uh, the integration and testing remotely, um, using collaboration tools, online tools, um, just different techniques that were available to us. And so we were able to do that. Certainly there were some inefficiencies, um, but we were able to compress our schedule so that we could stick to this launch date. Great. Donya. Thanks for joining us this morning uh, and continued success. Thank you very much. All right, Daryl, back to you. All right, Franklin and Danya, thank you so much. Earlier you heard uh, a little bit about the Lagrange points. I got a primer from Mick and Joshua. And so now let's revisit that. Lagrange points are uh, two gravitationally protected zones that are around the orbit of Jupiter. Here's principal investigator Hal Levison and Lucy to help explain. The Trojan asteroids are found in Lagrange points, which are these special places that lead or follow planet in its orbit by 60 degrees. And it's sort of where the gravitational force of the planet and the gravitational force of the sun all cancel out. So if you put an object there, it will stay there for a long period of time, basically forever. So when we see objects there, these are objects that we know were in place a very long time ago. So if you just take a random asteroid and just put it in the outer solar system, the gravitational force 
of the four giant planets will just clear them out in a very short period of time. So they'll basically be gone. So the only places, it turns out, in the outer solar system where you can find stable regions are these Lagrange points. Lucy in particular is going to go after the Jupiter Trojans. We're trying to see a type of object that represents and constrains the formation of the outer planets. And you need to go to these Lagrange points in order to see that kind of object. One of the really groovy aspects of our mission is its trajectory, because we're visiting a record number of objects like these Trojans. And we do that with this very complicated dance, particularly in the beginning, where we are using the Earth, actually, as I gotta interrupt here, because we got actually a really great question from Justine, Justine. Um, if I may ask, how do we make sure the animation is the same with what's actually happening in the real sky? And I've seen this before, and it's a really great question, because depending on the agency we're with, it is different. Uh, I'm going to switch over to a different view here for a quick second. On this view, in the top right corner here, I'm not sure if you'll see my mouse or not. Nope. Uh, in the top right corner, it says live data. It's just being cut off just a little bit there. That's live data, which means that this animation is being designed from the real raw data from Lucy. Now, at some times when they are no ground stations, uh, we have seen that it is, uh, it'll is it say um, estimated or uh, there's some other terms that we've seen before. Normally, it's estimated uh, telemetry or from scheduled telemetry data uh, where it's estimating what the ship is doing. But this right now is from the real raw data that ULA and NASA is receiving from Lucy as the RCS thrusters are uh, positioning itself in advance of spacecraft release in just three minutes time. So a really great question there. We have seen with some other agencies where they don't have any real live data on their animation and it's just a substitute. Quint, you know, this is what we think it's going to look like the whole time. Now, they build those animations off of the true data of what they think the booster should do, uh, the thrusters should do. They make it look as accurate as they can. But uh, on some of these missions, we actually do get to see that full raw data. Uh, a lot of the agencies are starting to do these types of animations uh, because it's easier for their teams to track the... Uh, yeah, just the progress of the ship uh, on the progress of its mission. We're coming up to two minutes until separation of the spacecraft, beginning its, uh, it's already on its way to uh, Jupiter and the Lagrange points, but uh, we are two minutes away from that uh, estimated time of spacecraft separation. If you're just joining us, though, take a moment to engage that like, subscribe button. It does help us out. We're coming up at T-minus 90 seconds until spacecraft separation. Uh, the Centaur roll has uh, uh, started to cut its roll and stabilize, preparing for Lucy to separate from that Centaur. Uh, here on your screen, you're seeing a really great animation of what the trajectory of Lucy will be like. So you can see how it's going to do an Earth gravity assist. Then it's going to go see the garage points. Then it's actually going to come back do another Earth gravity assist, head out to some other asteroids at a secondary Lagrange point, and that's the end of the 12-year mission. Now, the thing is, it's going to become into a stable orbit between Earth and Jupiter, these Lagrange points. So there's nothing saying that these missions could not be extended uh, for the future. We're coming down to one minute until spacecraft separation. Centaur is ready to separate. Uh, all the pre-separation uh, processes ULA has confirmed are going well. Uh, and in about 45 seconds, Lucy will be cut free. Uh, and then moments later, uh, we're not too sure how many minutes later, opening up her solar rays. But they said T minus plus or T plus one hour. So uh, it may be within just a few minutes. But let's listen in to the separation of Lucy. So obviously a big moment, especially for the for the ULA team, this would be the end of their their time. Is now spinning up in anticipation of spacecraft separation. Fifteen seconds. Huge moment here for all the teams. Actually, a successful launch. Five this seconds. is what it's all about. Spacecraft set. We have indication of successful separation of the Lucy spacecraft. 
So we're hearing some clapping here in the in the MDC here at the ASOC, uh, Joshua, uh, and that is a that is a huge moment for all Lucy of the teams. Lucy is on her we way. Still have quite a bit to go. Uh, solar array deployment. We talked about those earlier. Those big, huge solar arrays that are needed, and uh, the team spacecraft team will be awaiting. Uh, to to get confirmation that that is started, and then there'll be 22 minutes, what they refer to as 22 minutes of terror, yeah. <laughs> um, waiting for those solar rays to deploy. And of course, they have to get acquisition of signal to verify all that uh, slightly after that. So the next uh, few minutes as we get through this is going to be uh, spacecraft team will be uh, kind of sitting around waiting to see what happens and making sure Lucy is uh, healthy and doing well. But spacecraft separation, huge milestone for the teams working the launch vehicle today yeah i mean nick i mean even here uh i got some goosebumps like the, <laughs> yeah. it's chills in that moment of just like you can feel the energy of the people around you just like so excited and obviously uh that applause is very genuine uh this is a hard, this is a serious moment but it's also like a really joyous moment um and you'll see uh the ula team obviously this is the end of their major task for today uh, but nasa launch manager and the, the nasa lsp team they will continue to stay with this because uh for you guys getting the spacecraft healthy is the mission. It's not just the launch, it's making sure that they get on their way. So Got a really great question here from uh, Dave in the chat. Do you ever think of how much space junk they have added with these launches, or do you think they make it so, so it all comes back? Really depends on the agency you're talking about. Uh, but uh, ULA, SpaceX, Rocket Lab, a lot of them are actually really good. Um, a large portion of your space junk comes from your first or your second stage of your rocket. Now, SpaceX recovers their first stage because they're reflyable. Obviously, with ULA, they are not with the Atlas. But what happens is the Atlas booster, the first stage of the booster, doesn't actually get the spacecraft into a complete orbit. It gets it up, generally speaking, to its uh, perigee or apogee at the moment. Um, then it separates, and the second stage is what does the burn to circularize, which means that booster, though it separates, it may coast up some more, but will eventually come down and burn up in the atmosphere and then splash down in the ocean uh, where it could be recovered, but generally just burns up through re-entry. There are a few agencies in the world that don't care as much, uh, unfortunately, uh, so they do uh, cause some more space junk. Uh, in the in the atmosphere uh, and there's lots of teams working on how do they uh, you know clean that up are there ways of being able to uh, start you know sending up you know starships in the future or other crafts to start attaching uh, or even just pushing uh, some of this garbage so it can burn up by itself generally speaking a lot of this garbage is cleaned up uh, the second stage I believe will also burn up of Atlas uh, I believe they're able to do a quick burn of it and send it back, but I'm not 100% on that. I know that's what SpaceX does. It's able to refire its second stage again and just give it a little push so that within a few days it does actually uh, splash down again, uh, eliminating the junk. So definitely is a big question, something that people follow uh, and are asking more and more. It's built into the Artemis Accords as well. Uh, so a great question there, Dave. Thanks for sending that in with our Lucy cartoon character. And in this next episode, Lucy wants to show you where she's going and why she's studying the Trojan asteroids. You We're gonna keep our live, I hope my mic was on that whole time. I think it was. Let me know if you heard that response there, Dave. Um, but uh, I think that is going to do it for us. We do know that they have uh, about 20 minutes or so uh, until uh, Lucy fully comes online uh, and then has solar array deployment. Uh, but at this point, they are definitely going to be a lot less updates uh, about the mission. But Lucy has had stage separation uh, and has begun her 12-year-plus mission uh, to the Trojan asteroids. Uh, the mighty Atlas has completed another successful mission but uh, I think that is going to do it for us here tonight. I uh, thought it was going to be a quick one. We were here for well over two hours. want to thank you guys for being here. Uh, thanks to those that sent in Super Chats, supporting us in that way, or all of our new YouTube members, uh, should any of you have joined tonight. Um, but thank you to our YouTube members, our Patreon members, and to you for watching. You make what we do possible. But here at the Launchpad, it's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow because uh, there's so much happening.
doing, and we just can't wait to journey with you. We believe that space is better together, so we invite you to join our crew by subscribing, joining our Discord. It's free. Follow us on all the social medias, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, uh, and making sure that you've plugged in, yeah, just with our community here on YouTube and on Discord. But for now, that's going to do it for me here at the Launchpad. This is Zach with the Launchpad signing off, and we will see you next time. Have a good night, everyone.